Knowledge, they say, is power. Hello, gracious ones, and welcome back to my channel. If you're seeing this beautiful face for the first time, my name is Grace, and I am currently a student in the UK, and I just love to share helpful tips on my channel, anything I feel like inspired to do to help you or to help people um, make better decisions or do better in whatever they are doing. That's what you'll find on this channel. And of course, some entertaining videos and vlogs. <laughs> so if you want to enjoy this kind of content from me, please click the subscribe button, subscribe and join this gracious family. And I, I really appreciate all the returning um, subscribers. You guys are the real deal. Huh? You're the best. Thank you so much. For today's video, I will be mentioning 11 points that will help you settle in things I believe you should do once you arrive. Top of my list, I'm sure you are not surprised. I'm sure you know. You know how I keep talking about accommodation. Accommodation is the first on my list. If you are in an apartment, an Airbnb, you're with a friend, wherever you are, try to sort out your accommodation. Get your address because you will need your proof of address for a number of activities. Second thing on my list is the BRP card. The BRP is, uh, BRP is a biometric residence permit. Okay. It's just like a normal ID card, normal ID card that you have, normal small plastic ID card. That's what your BRP card looks like. And it's what gives you the right um, to reside in the UK, right to live in the UK, and also the right to work because on your BRP card, your um, work hours, allowable work hours for student, for example, you have 20 hours written on your BRP card. So you, you also have the, the duration within which you are expected to be resident in the UK. So your BRP card is very important. And when you get it, please hold it dearly as in handle it like an egg because you can't afford to lose it. Losing it means you have to go through a lot of process to get another one. And secondly, even if it expires, you cannot say it's missing because to get a new BRP card in the UK, you still have to return the old one. You will shred it and email it back to them, you know, so the BRP card is something that you have to hold dearly, so you get your BRP card. After you've gotten your BRP card, usually you get your BRP card from the post office nearest to the address you filled in when you were filling your visa application form. I, I know that they said sometimes some schools get for the students and you can pick it from school. So just check to be sure. But basically, um, most times you have to pick up your BRP card from the nearest post office to the address you put in when you are applying for your visa. The number three thing I want you to tackle is to get yourself a SIM card. Luckily, I hear people now get um, um, UK SIM card given to some people at the TLC, TLS, TLS Center, I beg your pardon. Um, that's where you go for your biometric capturing and i hear some people get um a complimentary um uk phone number there that makes it easy for you awesome but if you didn't get that once once you come in try to get yourself a uk sim card a uk telephone number because you will be needing this telephone number for people to communicate with you so most of the things you need to do, you need to do with a UK number. You need to apply for a job, you need a UK number. Your school will need your UK number, so you need to get a UK number. Your school will need your UK address too, which is why you should sort out your accommodation. So the UK SIM card, get yourself one. I tried to get one at the airport, it's ridiculously expensive. So if you can find a way to manage, once you get to your locality, go to any supermarket, you get it at a very cheap price. Um, some of them are 50 pence or one pounds, okay? And then you can get yourself um, a phone contract. Each of them have like a contract whereby you pay a certain amount, be it maybe ten pounds per month, and you get a certain number of SMS or a certain number of a certain amount of data for the duration. You know, some are unlimited tests, unlimited calls, maybe ten gig data or five gig data. Based on the network you decide to settle for, look for different packages available and go ahead to pay for what you think you can consume within a month or afford to consume within a month or afford to pay for within a month because it's going to be like a monthly renewal um, of the contract. It will be good for you to take another step which will be to 
feel go online go to the gov.uk website and search for national insurance number follow the steps there and fill the form to get your national insurance um, number and i number this is very essential for you if you plan to work and i'm sure that everybody coming to the uk will plan to work <laughs> you need to work you need to make money to to pay bills to sort yourself out to live happily so the ni number is key for your that's how the the, the government um, takes its tax and also uh, money for your pension that is being saved for your um, retirement time so that's another thing you should do get your ni number uh, normally when you apply i don't know what the rules are now but normally when they apply they will tell you to take up to six weeks because of the backlog and the number of people they are dealing with but in my case it didn't take more than two weeks and the fifth on the list will be to enroll in your school to enroll in your school you also need your international passport you will need so if you are a student that's when this applies to you of course if you're not a student you don't need to enroll in any school but of course you need to go to your workplace sort yourself out at your workplace and the like but if you are a student it will be very essential for you to enroll enrollment means you go to school you register you get your student id card you sort out everything you need to they see your they also need to see your brp see your passport see some of your documents you had used to apply they want to physically cite those documents you you sent them um, um soft copies of why you were applying they want to like check depending on your school anyway, but my school checked, um, confirmed the, the documents you sent, the certificates, things, just the documents you use for your application, your passport and then your BRP, they just wanted to cite it. So you need to get your student ID card. Without the student ID card, like when I went to school, I was just wandering around and I was, I was marveled by all I could see. So I said, okay, let me walk into the library. I got to the library and I couldn't enter. They said, sorry. You have to get your student id card first so there are a couple of things you need your student id card to do you know there are also some freebies you go to some places to shop and you have to like show your id and, and stuff like that in some schools you need the id to hop onto your school buses at reduced prices or even free so just try to get your student id if you're a student and that you have to do by going to the school to enroll number six open a bank account most jobs will ask you to actually fill your bank account so you need to get a bank account in my case i struggled to get a a bank account opened the traditional bank account because they kept asking for some unrealistic things for someone who has barely been in the country for two weeks they're asking me to give you um my utility bills to ask as evidence of my um, residential address but later I found out that once you're done with your enrollment, and that reason why you should do your enrollment on time is once you're done with your enrollment, you have access to certain letters, certain stuffs on your school portal. So when I had done my enrollment, I was up, I could do what you call self-service and get some letters. I got the bank letter from my school. I just downloaded the letter, put in the bank I wanted, and then just downloaded the letter from my own port school portal after I had done my enrollment. At the end of the day, the traditional bank was wasting time and taking forever and i needed to i was expecting some money in less than a month's time and i needed to open an account urgently my advice to you would be go to first of all get an online bank it's, it's very easy and when you get the online bank then you can start sorting out the traditional bank or you can do both simultaneously um online banks um banks like mozo revolut monies there are a couple of them but these are the three um, most popular ones um, or the three popular ones I'm aware of and so um, they are easier to open and they are reliable they are doing well if you check their reviews they are very okay but I'm still um, so believes that you should have a traditional bank where you can go if there's an issue you can physically go to them and say this is what what I'm facing so I have an online bank and when I settled in I opened two more traditional banks so I have like three accounts which it's okay for me at the moment number seven if you are a family person that's you have children you need to register your children in school um when i was looking for accommodation i was also looking for schools around the area for my children so i already seen the nearest schools in the area so what i did was i reached out i went i typed those schools on, on the 
browser found their email addresses and sent them mails okay i think two of them sent me replied me and said oh this is the link to the council you need to apply to the council um normally when you want to apply for schools for your children you need to apply through the town or city council where you are based they are the ones who uh, allocate schools to your children you have three choices to make so you make your first second and third, third choices three different schools you want your children to it's better you put the three um the fact that i put it school as first choice doesn't mean you get it there is no so they have quota there's no space if the space in the school is filled up based on the number of students they can accommodate they will not take you so then maybe they move to your second choice and then your third choice but if you're unable to get any of the choices you filled in then you can actually appeal and if you win then the school has no choice but to find this place for you so there's a process to to that but basically you need to register your children and interestingly one of the schools i emailed said i should come to the school once i arrived in uk and come fill some forms so for that school when i got in i sent them away that i was in and they gave me a date to come with the documents my 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 children's um, birth certificate their passports uh, i think that was about it yeah and so i went filled the form registered them and they for they now forwarded to they actually had space and they actually gave me the form that i would have filled through the council so they now forwarded it to the council and then the council sent me sent me an email saying oh we've allocated your child to this school so they did the, they did the work i would have done through the council for me and i got my my um daughter into the school my son was still too young to start school at that moment but yeah i filled the form for him in advance so that when he was of age they actually called me to to come and complete a new set of documentation but he was already on their waiting list so yeah that was what i did so i hope that tip helps someone but yeah, you need to register your children for school, ASAP, so that they start to go to school. It's a crime for any child above five. So if your child is above five and your child is not in school, it's a crime. So you, so you need to ensure that your child goes to school once your child is above five. Below five, you can decide to keep your child with you, put, take your child to a minder, um, put your child in nursery, whatever you want to do. You can decide to just do whatever you want to do. It's not compulsory, but school is compulsory. In the uk from ages 5 to 18 compulsory number eight on my list is get yourself a provisional driver's license why is this important one it will help you it's actually a proof of your address because it has your address on it and also you cannot run away from it if you want to drive in the uk if you want to move on to having your full driver's license that's the very first stage. It is with that professional driver's license that you book your theory test, your practical test. Anything that will still help you to get an instructor is still the professional driver's license that will just drive you through this through this whole step until you finally get your full driver's license. Number nine on my list is for you to get a job. <laughs> to get a job is there are so many places, so many ways you can get a job, so many places you can get a job. But if you're a student, I think your first point of call should be the student career page. There's always a career and employability um, page for most schools, I think for all schools in the UK. And so you, on, those, on, on that particular page, you can see vacancies, some schools, some part-time jobs in school and the likes. There are also lots of retail jobs you could get in retail supermarkets, you could get care jobs. You could get um, warehousing jobs. There are lots of um, survival jobs you could get. And if you're a new one, you don't really know how to go about it. Speak to people. Do not put, place yourself in a cocoon. You know, don't be on your own. Spread your tentacles. Talk to people. I'm, I'm the student and I am entitled to like 20 hours. So my husband and my kids are my dependents. So when we came, I had already told myself that if I work 20 hours, the money I would make, I would put back everything or even more into childcare if I'm to pay for childcare for my my child or my children so that I can do that work. So I decided not to work. It was an intentional move because, of course, I had already saved enough for that period. I, I knew that even if I don't work for the whole full year, I'm, I'm, I'm covered by the grace of God. So, yeah, I didn't work until 
my internship period, I just decided to face my school and home. So my husband was the one that was actually really searching for a job. So what I did was, when we're finding it difficult to get jobs, I started speaking to everybody in school. The first two jobs my husband did when we got to the UK, I got the contact through my classmates. So talk to people, talk to people. You never can tell who will link you to a job you can get. There are lots of jobs. There are lots of jobs. It now depends on what you can do, what you cannot do, or what you don't want to do. So apart from looking for this survivor just please start looking for what you want to do. You're looking for survivor jobs, part-time jobs, full-time jobs. Start looking for, if you're staying, start looking for graduate jobs. I said this in my video about internships. Here in the UK, you need to start searching for, so if you're looking for a job next year, you need to start looking for the job this year. So that, <laughs> because the, 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 the recruitment process takes, it takes a, lot, a lot of time. So when you're looking for those survivor jobs, please keep also applying for what you want to do. Keep thinking about what is the next step. So you are in the UK, do you want to stay back? If you want to stay back, what do you want to do? And you want to do a particular kind of job, okay. Now, that's kind of job I want to do. I might need to do this training, this training, this training to get me to that part. Start working on it. Or I just need to start applying, start applying. Or I want to do my PhD. Just prepare your mind. Start drawing out your strategy as, as, as you have entered. Number 10 on my list is to get your do your GP registration. So GP is general practitioner. You will need to be registered with a GP to be able to access medical care. Anything medical, you want to see a doctor for an issue. Even when you want to be, um, see a specialist, it is still your GP that will give you a referral letter to see the specialist. So for example, let's say you have an ear infection or something and you want to see an ENT doctor, it's your GP that would give you a referral letter to see the ENT doctor. If you have a routine medication, as in you have a medication you need to take, it's still the GP that would give you the prescription that you now take to the pharmacy to get your drugs. So the GP is your go-to for every general medical issue, general practitioner, so general medical issue. You need to register for dental, dental care. So GP registration and dental registration. So the GP doesn't handle your dental care and you need to register for dental care. So you need to do GP and dental registration. For optical issues, eye issues, you need to see, go to a, an optical center. So GP doesn't cover that too, but that you don't need to register. You just need to go to the website for any of the optical centers. I think the most common ones I've seen in the UK um, are the Specsaver and Vision Express. So all you need to do is go to their website, you book an appointment, and on the appointment day you show up, you do your eye test, and if you need to wear glasses, they'll prescribe the glasses, you pay. Everything you do, you do your eye test, you pay. You prescribe glasses for you, you pay. The last but not the least is transportation. So part of what you would need your student ID and enrollment for is to get things like real card. So I think the real card generally stops at 16 to 25 years, I think. But no matter your age, like be 40, once you're a student, you can get a real card. We call it student real card, which will make you get a 30% a, a discount for each train ride you take. All you need to do is pay £30 a year. Know how to use Google Map. If you don't know how to use Google Map, learn. Because you will need Google Map to navigate your way around in the UK. Even in buses, it was taking a bus in the UK. For me to know where to stop is the Google map I use and all the likes. <sighs> I think with this 11 points of mine, I believe it would um, be easier for you to settle in in the UK. And I say big welcome to all those who have come in this January 2023. What, whatever our end goal of coming to the UK is, we shall achieve that by the grace of God. That's my prayer for you. Stay graceful. I love you all. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Mm.